Hi there, uh, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Arvind. I'm a senior consultant at the PwC Space Practice based in Paris, in France, focusing on Earth observation and doing uh, assignments for uh, companies and for institutions, um, advising them on their strategy and uh, looking at the market trends. And yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that's quickly about me. What is your definition of new space? For me, new space is when space industry has reached outside its definition of the space industry and entered the larger tech industry. It is also the time when data from space is being used in a larger data industry. So that's, that's one part of it. And the second part of it is obviously the privatization part, which I think is mostly agreed upon, what is new space. And I also uh, agree with that. That's when uh, space industry has gone outside uh, the realms of the institutions and then moved on to private companies. Earth, Earth observation makes a uh, uh, significant press in the new space industry, right? It's a small size market, though, with high growth potential. Uh, can you give us an overview from your perspective as a, as a management consultant? Absolutely. So Earth observation, uh, you can view it again, you know, as an upstream where, you know, you focus on the hardware and uh, the satellites and the payloads that get into space. And then obviously the innovations that are taking place in the downstream. What are we actually doing with the data that we, that we get from space? Obviously, because of, you know, what we discussed with new space, things are getting more privatized. You not only have missions that are manufactured by institutions, you also have companies that are coming up and sending satellites up and you have commercial Earth observation imagery available. There is innovations happening on both ends, of course. There's a lot of uh, emphasis on the miniaturization and the impact of CubeSats into the Earth observation industry. You know, now you have constellations, you have companies like Planet, you have Spire, and you have, you know, tens of uh, companies coming up who want to send satellites up. So that's innovation in the upstream. And then there's a lot of innovation happening in the downstream. Historically, Earth observation was uh, the data that you get from satellites, which is called Earth observation, was used predominantly only for scientific use. And now it started to be used for commercial purposes. So there is, you know, a twofold change uh, in the industry, both in the upstream and the downstream. And obviously, because of new space, you have a number of companies coming up, launching satellites, not only doing that, but also trying to make sense of the data. So what are the insights that we can get from the data that is used for, you know, commercial companies, uh, can be used for uh, scientific purposes, uh, that can be used for solving larger problems such as climate change. So I think Earth observation is reaching a point where it's not just restricted to, you know, one uh, industry, which was only predominantly the scientific industry, and now it's reaching the larger commercial, um, commercial industry as well. What market trends uh, in Earth observation do you expect to become disruptive in the near future? Um, I, would, I would put these uh, trends largely into three categories. Uh, one is more from the data perspective. So what's happening in the data? So there are, you know, a lot of innovations with respect to data. There are high resolution satellites coming up. So 30 centimeter was the benchmark by Maxar until a few years ago. And now there are multiple constellations coming up with 30 centimeter. And resolution, as you know, is very important, especially when you want to make sense of Earth observation data. So the innovations in data is very important. So one is resolution, uh, one is revisit. So the type of constellations that we talked about. So obviously if you have 100 satellites taking pictures of the, of the same location, you can get more insights from that image because you can actually see things gradually changing and combine that with artificial intelligence. And then you fuse that with different types of data. You, you get this small innovation, which is just putting constellations up leading to multiple insights. So, and that's the second in the data uh, category. And the third uh, innovation in the data category, again, is the type of data. So data is not just uh, optical data, you also have radar data. And now there are companies that are coming up that are looking at very small parts of the spectrum. So you have companies that are serving infra infrared data companies that are uh, serving just radio frequency uh, monitoring. So there's a lot of innovation happening on the type of data as well. So that's on the data perspective. On, on, on the technology perspective, 
again, uh, as, we, as we talked about earlier, satellites are getting smaller. And what can you do with small satellites is you can launch them faster. What happens if you launch them faster? You can, you know, you can test new types of payloads. You have uh, uh, hyperspectral payloads being tested. And this leads to innovations, again, which is feeding into the data category that we talked about. Um, and again, there is also the technology, which personally I'm most excited about, is onboard processing. So uh, just so people get an idea, there is uh, petabytes of data available for download every day. And the reality is, are all of these petabytes of data being downloaded useful? Not much, because if you take a picture and there are cities you know, covered in clouds, uh, you can consider London or you can consider any European city in winter. Basically, you need to be really lucky to download an image that doesn't have clouds. So what if you have an innovation that processes data on orbit and then only downlinks imagery that is you know, essential? So essentially having a cloud filtering algorithm, but in space. So that's, again, a few companies working on it. There's a company in Poland. There's a company in Australia, both of them working on innovations uh, such as onboard processing. So that's a technology trend that I'm very excited about. And the third category of uh, trends that I want to talk about is on the business side of things. So we have all these types of data that's available. You know, it can be optical, it can be radar, it can be infrared, it can be radio frequency. What do we do with the uh, data? What is the business model? How are people going to consume it? So historically, as I mentioned, the science community has largely adopted Earth observation data, but how do we get it further than that? What are the business models that would help you get there? So there are marketplaces that are evolving. So marketplaces such as Up42, marketplaces such as Airbus One Atlas, where you can go and see a lot of types of data available and you can pick and choose the type of data that you want and then you can use it. So this is gonna help the upload because from a larger data perspective, you have all these types of data and you need to have one platform that simplifies it. So that's the trends of marketplace that's happening. And there is a second trend for people who do not want to deal with data, they just want to deal with insights. So uh, a question can be, I just want to know how many trees are there in this arrondissement in Paris? It's a very simple question that can be answered by satellite imagery. But some people don't want to go into you know, downloading the data, writing an algorithm, to count the number of trees using artificial intelligence. They don't want that. They just want answers. So you have companies, again, who you can call as uh, product companies who are aiming for more as a software as a service business model, going towards answering that type of questions. So insights as a service, as, as I would put it. So these are two companies that, two types of companies that are coming up, again, in the business side of things. So yeah, so three categories that I uh, named, business trends, technology trends, and, um, and data trends. So, those are the three kind of trends that are changing the Earth observation industry right now. How do you think new space startups will differentiate from established industry players in the field of Earth observation? Yes, um, they are obviously the, the differentiation point was they belong to new space. So, you know, they are, you know, they are differing already in kind of the brand image perspective. But then what they're also doing from, you know, a business perspective is they are making data more accessible. So historically, you would have this one place where you can potentially go and search for data and download, and this place is kind of hidden. And that's what usually Earth Observation used to be. And now with uh, the companies like Planet that came up, they started making data more democratized. You started seeing satellite data more. So you, can, you could have seen satellite data in press, you could see in uh, defense articles that you would read, you would see in climate articles that you read. There's a lot of use of data that is in mainstream media, not in the scientific community. And that's a very big differentiation that the new space is bringing into, which the industrial uh, traditional players are catching up to. So, you know, that's, that's the thing that's going to move the industry forward. So essentially what new space is brought in is made the industry go forward. So that's, that's one, you know, making data more mainstream and modern. And second is, is the ability to, you know, differentiate in the data. So any industry you would, you would imagine, you know, there is this uh, Clayton Christensen's innovation di dilemma where you need to have a disruptive innovation that comes in and changes things for the industry to move forward. And that is, again, happening with new space players because private investments are coming in and funding in new types of data 
uh, new types of satellites, um, you know, hundreds of satellites that can monitor the Earth every day. And this was not possible earlier with industrial player, players, traditional players, because traditional players only served, you know, the governments and the institutions, and you know, their reach was restricted largely there. And now, new space, what it's bringing is it's it's making people take more risks, and that's essentially moving the industry forward because you have new technologies being tested. And, you know, the other trends that you might have discussed earlier in your series about new space bringing costs down is also helping Earth observation because you can now go and send payloads up, you know, for, for cheaper than they, they could have imagined 10 years back. And which is, again, a big differentiation compared to traditional players because they build huge satellites, you know, that are, that are amazing scientifically, but then, you know, they are stuck there. For, for a few years. And then the next set of satellites come in five years. But with new space, you can test new payloads every other uh, month, even right now, every other year. So that again, moves the industry forward. So these are two things that I really think new space is brought into, brought into the um, industry, making it mainstream, and then allowing innovation to happen faster. Which again, from my perspective, I come from the software world, is something that software used to do a lot, you know, to make software more mainstream and to fail fast, as you would call it. And it's great that new space is brought it in into the space industry because that's essentially what the industry needs to, to get forward and, you know, to reach that billion dollar potential that uh, we talk about for Earth observation a lot. Thank you so much, Aravind, for your time today and uh, uh, best of luck for anything you will do at PwC.